Coming up on the UB Basketball Insider Show, Nate Oates joins us to talk about a big game later today, a big stretch coming up, and a look back at his fun trip with the team to Northern Ireland. We sit down with Felicia Leggett Jack. The women's team is briefly back in town. Plus, we check in with all the other good stuff going on here at UB. It's the UB Basketball Insider Show. Let's get it started right now. So many you get one chance in a lifetime to do this thing. We will make mistakes. We'll get back on defense. It's right here. We got 40 minutes energy. Let's come in here. Oh. Baseline, Javon Gray driving to the hoop, and he dumps it with his right hand. Right over the bigger hand, Drew Gordon. It's about us. It's just our, our sisterhood, our foxhole, and we don't compare ourselves to anybody else. We're ready to go. We'll be ready to play anybody else. Dillard now Euro step off glass and in. Ooh, Sierra Dillard. That is a bad, bad move out of the senior there. Basketball fans on your feet. Here come your Bulls. Top of the key, Hanson Massenberg. Long NBA three. Good! It's tied. 14.2 seconds to go. It's time now for the top five plays of the week presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Number five. Devontae Jordan lobs it for McGrady, jams it with two hands. Just like that, first possession and alley-oop dunk for Montel McRae. Bad defense from Gay there, both go to the same man. Everybody leaves uh, McRae open for the easy alley-oop dunk. Number four. Jordan now steals a dribble handoff. Devontae slams down a righty tomahawk. He exploded to the basket. Wow, what a dunk by Devontae Jordan. It was Dr. J-esque as he took off and slammed it home. Number three. Now he slashes toward the bucket. Carruthers over the help, tucked the ball away. Back it comes to Dante, one man to beat. He takes it to the hoop, off balance, left good and a foul. Great fast break by Dante Carruthers. His offense really coming alive for the Bulls. And a nice basket. He'll go to the free throw line. Number two. Perkins on the right baseline, takes it to the wing, hands to Harris for a three, and it goes in. That will tie the game at 37 as we head to halftime. Got Jeremy the, Harris in the right corner ties it up. Got the ball to Perkins down low. Thought that that was going to be the play, but it was a really nice fake out. Number one. Shovels the level for a right wing three. Missed badly. Massaberg has it for Buffalo. CJ, no look pass to a cutting Carruthers. Left side layup is good. He's fouled and counted. Dante Carruthers just on fire offensively with the driving layup. Tough off the uh, backboard and in. But just a tough shot by Carruthers. And Carruthers makes uh, the, tough, the tough layup. Nate, the win that came over Lemoyne from Division Two on Wednesday was an interesting game, and the first half I think had a lot of people kind of a little nervous, wondering what was going on. Were you thinking the same thing? Yeah, Jude, those games can go south sometimes. I mean, that's why some people recommend you play Division Three teams that don't have scholarship players. But I, I, I'm not wanting to play Lemoyne. I thought I knew they're good. They went to the Elite Eight last year in Division Two. I think the top, maybe. 20, 25% of Division Two is better than the bottom 25% of Division One. A lot, of, a lot of years. So, we wanted a decent game that would test us. I think it tests us a little longer than we wanted <laughs> to be tested. But I don't think we came out in the second half and did what we had to. And they can shoot. I mean, that's the problem. If you, you know, we they shot great. Team. They shot 60%, I think, in the first half, right? Close they were eight, eight for 12 from three. They're 67% from three. So you give up eight threes made in a, in a half. You no know, matter who it is, you're gonna have a hard time building up any kind of lead with that. Dante Carruthers is the ultimate kind of energy guy, and you needed him to be the energy guy, and he responded with a 20-point game last night. Is that, was that a sense that here's the guy that can get us going in the right direction? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he just plays so hard that, and offensively, he's not always, you know, I, like hitting shots, whatever it may be, but he plays hard and he gets downhill, and I think just his whole energy. So that's why we started in the second half. I mean, typically he comes off the bench, but we we didn't have time. Uh, shoot, it was tied at the half. We didn't have time to play games anymore. We we needed to get the energy picked up in a hurry, and he did it right out of the gate. That's why Pat called the timeout in the first minute of the second half. I think he felt 
like the energy was changing or had changed. So, and it didn't, the timeout didn't help too much. Our energy kept coming at them. And it was good to see we could pick it up like that. It'd be better to see if we just do 40 minutes of that, though. Yeah, I know. All right, so Dante was one of the stars. The other star was C.J. Massenburg with the second-ever triple-double in UB school history, 13 points, 13 rebounds, and 10 assists. It's quite an accomplishment amongst all the things that C.J. has accomplished in his career. That's a pretty cool one that he hadn't done yet. Yeah, it is. He usually doesn't have a problem with the points and the rebounds. He's He's usually there. I mean, he was our leading scorer and rebounder both last year. So it kind of creeped up on me. He only had one assist at the half. Uh, so all of a sudden, you know, we had a stat sheet there late in, late in the game, and he had seven assists, and he already had the uh, points and rebounds. So then I drew up a couple plays to try to get him an assist. I really only had to manufacture the one, though. The, the lob to Javon was the only one that, that he didn't get just in the flow. And, out of playing so I felt good he got it without me having to manufacture a bunch of assists you know sometimes you you know man you you know a coach will manufacture five assists for a kid right drawing everything up so he's got the ball in his hands with the scores coming off I didn't have to do that for him and he still got it so it may not be the last one he gets I mean he's gonna he's gonna get the points and the rebounds on a regular basis and, and he's become a much better playmaker to where he makes the reads coming off ball screens and everything else. And then if our defense is great, he, he gets them in transition. When Jeremy's making shots, it helps him get assists. When Perk's scoring inside and then Javon can make shots, we got a lot of guys around him that can make shots too. All right, so let's talk about today's game. It's a trip to St. Bonaventure, always a challenge, no matter how good or not good the Bonnies are. And all of a sudden, after a rough start for them, they've won three games in a row. you got to go into the Riley Center. What's the challenge in that game? Talk about just going down there and playing, because that sometimes seems to dominate regardless of what the Bonnies have to throw at you. It's it's the arena that sometimes is harder to beat. Yeah, they got a great home court uh, advantage playing down there in Riley Center. I mean, they're just like rabid fans. I, apparently, they were chanting, "We want UB" in the last couple minutes of the <laughs> Siena game. Right for them down there. So they've got us. We're uh, <laughs> we're we're there. So we've got our hands full. They've got Stockard back, their best player. He was hurt. They throttled Siena by almost doubled them up. They beat them by forty two. So they did double them up. Actually, they um, you know, we're we're gonna play. It's not, we're not. You know, we're not going to be scared. We've played at West Virginia. That's a pretty, pretty good environment to play at. We've played in some other good environments with the with this crew of guys. So we'll be ready to go. It's going to be a fun one. You know, if we, uh, if we can get a big, solid road win there, then we've got a week off for finals, and then we get Southern Illinois at home before we, you know, get to play at Syracuse and Marquette. So we've got a tough four-game stretch coming up here. And uh, if we get this first one at Bonaventure, I think it'll set us up for a good four-game stretch here. All right, it's 4 o'clock tip-off today at St. Bonaventure. You can see it on ESPN+. Plus. You can hear it on ESPN 1520. Speaking of the stretch coming up beyond that, we'll talk with Nate about that. We'll talk about the top 25 ranking and the recent trip to Northern Ireland. Why not get to Alumni Arena on Saturday, December 15th when the UB men's basketball team hosts Southern Illinois for a 2 p.m. tip-off. Be sure to stop by the Bulls team shop before the game and purchase a secret Santa gift box for just $10. All gift boxes have a starting value of $20 and include cool UB gear, tickets, gifts, and more. Bring the whole family to the game. It's sure to be an afternoon everyone will enjoy. For tickets, call 1-877-UB-THERE or visit UBBulls.com. Welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. This segment is presented by SefQ, changing lives every day. Well, Nate, you made a nice little jump in the top 25 this week. You go from 21 to 17. You're starting to creep towards the highest ranked spot for a mid-American conference team in the last 30 or so years. Saint Ball State was 15th in 2001. Then you got to go back like to the early 70s and beyond to find a MAC team that's higher than that. Were you surprised at the jump up of four spots? Uh, not really, because there's a lot of teams losing up there, so. We didn't lose, so somebody had to somebody had to creep up a little bit. But I mean, it's nice. Shoot, if we lose at Bonaventure, it's not going to matter. We, we won't. Uh, I didn't realize that though. But it would be nice to get up above 15. That would be nice to be the highest ranked MAC team in the last whatever 30 whatever 
so years it's been. Um, you also have the chance, should you win at Bonaventure and stay in the polls, uh, to be in the polls for five consecutive weeks hasn't happened to a MAC team um, for a long time as well, too. So it, you know, it shows a little staying power, which I know is what you talk an awful lot about. Is you want to build up enough so that you can afford a loss or so here and there and not drop out, right? That's kind of the goal before the end of non-conference. Yeah, I think if you look at these next four games, if if you won at Bonaventure one against Southern Illinois at home. I think if you got one of those two, you could probably still stay in there. You'd take it, you'd probably drop if you lost, but yeah, and if you win one of those two, if you did that, if you go three and one over this next four game stretch and then take care of business in conference, I think I think you get an at large bid. I mean, I, I don't know how we won with, with what we've done unless some of those teams we beat just fell off the face of the earth and ended up not being as good of wins as we thought they'd be, but uh, that's the goal. We're trying to put ourselves in a position to be talked about as an at-large, get an at-large, still win the conference tournament, hopefully. But if not, at least you've assured yourself of still making the tournament. All right, let's take a little trip back uh, a couple of weeks or so ago. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to catch up with you and talk to you not only about the good basketball your team played in Belfast, Northern Ireland, but the experience and the trip itself. And let's start there. A whole week, even almost a week before you start to play basketball, what was it like for you and the guys to get to experience this uh, different country and, and the different culture over there? No, it was great. And, you know, we talked to, before we went about the education we've gotten with Dick Hunt and what everything he did to prepare us for it. So then you get over there and we take a bus tour on the first day and you get to see the peace wall that they've heard about, talked about, and our guys are aware of the, you know, Protestant Catholic deal. We get to the Lord Mayor, I, at least I did, but the, the player, you know, she's Catholic every other year. It goes kind of back and forth between them and there's, you've got the divide and then we get to see the Titanic Museum that, which that was pretty cool, you know. Now you forget, you age yourself a little bit. You forget when that movie came out. I, there's been a bunch of movies, but the one, you know, that the most recent one. A lot of these guys were really young. I didn't realize it'd been that long, but hey, it was it was cool. I mean, the whole we got to go into a school. Our, our guys were great. Like after I had to leave to go do something with the mayor, and our players were still there. They're eating lunch. I think the kids had recess, and I saw a video. Our guys were out playing some basketball out, outdoors with the kids at recess. So then those kids came to the game Friday and were cheering for Buffalo, the whole school. They did a really good job with the tournament. They had a lot of elementary schools fill the arena on Friday. And then Saturday it was no elementary kids. It was all adults. And, I mean, it, the place was packed. It was best MT I've been to as far as – atmosphere and all that stuff goes great and then your team played really good basketball the win over milwaukee and then the really tough hard fought win over san francisco a very good and previously undefeated san francisco team uh the setting the basketball y'all happy with the way the two games went yeah we, we played well i mean we um got the wins which was crucial san francisco was good you know kind of put us like we talked about earlier we moved from 21 to 17 in the polls based on those two wins so overall it was good you know it's a Wears you out a little bit, though. Shoot, you got back Sunday night, Monday, everybody's dragging, and Tuesday it still wasn't quite right. And Wednesday was good enough to get the win over Lemoyne. I think that was good scheduling to have Lemoyne in that well spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now we now we got to go to Bonaventure then. So right, okay. So it's Bonaventure on Saturday. Then you get a week off. Then you've got Southern Illinois for the second time this year at home a week uh, from Saturday. And then you've got that stretch that you touched on with Syracuse and Marquette. This is a lot of this non-conference ranking and all that other stuff kind of pivots on this next couple of games, don't they? Yeah, it really does. I mean, it's huge. This next four game stretch is the biggest four game stretch since I've been here with what we've, we're trying to accomplish here. So our, our guys are, I think we're starting to peak at the right time. I like the way we're playing. We're healthy. So we, we got to run through this thing. We got to be focused and keep the guys practicing well. And, you know, if we can build from one game to the next, just keep getting better, I think we'll be all right. All right, so it's Saturday at Bonaventure, then the following Saturday, a 2 p.m. tip-off here at Alumni Arena against a very good Southern Illinois team that the Bulls have already beaten once on the road, and they'll be determined to come here and try to make up for that. And then after that, it's that big week with the games at Syracuse and at Marquette. Good luck on the stretch. Good luck uh, at Bonaventure. Keep uh, keep all this good stuff going. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate That's it. That's Bulls head coach Nate Oates. When we come back, we'll check in with the women's basketball team. It's Felicia Leggett-Jack and the Road Warriors. That's coming up next. 
UB Athletics proudly invites you to etch your name into history with a personalized brick on the new Stampede Plaza, located near the brand new Murchie Family Fieldhouse. Available in three fully customizable sizes, these bricks are the perfect way to celebrate holidays, graduations, or any special occasion. Join us in celebrating UB's rich heritage and exciting future. To cement your personal legacy at the University of Buffalo, call 833-551-5702 or visit bricksforbowls.com. Welcome back to UB Basketball Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Well, you look a lot like Felicia Leggett Jack, the UB women's basketball coach, but it's been so long since we've seen you. I, It, it is you, right? It's me. I can get loud and aggressive <laughs> and let you realize it's me, but Man, it's been fun now. You haven't, been, you haven't had a home game since the mid-November on this crazy seven-game road trip, so uh, it's good to have you back in town, uh, and it's good to talk a little bit about what the challenges have been on the road and some of the successes on the road. It's almost over another couple of weeks before you get another home game but what have you learned about your team from being away for so long this team is resilient this team is fun these young ladies are funny and these young ladies are very serious students who really um are using their time wisely to study and some of them have taken tests on the road and uh, thank you professors who allow that to happen but uh, the schedule just aligned where we had to be on the road so long so uh, this is a good group of young women I know I say it every year but my goodness this is another good group of young ladies because you had so many new players has there been a benefit of being on the road together to help this team bond a little bit to help your veterans know what they need to know about your young players has that been one of the positives of this well you know that's something that i will look back on in the end of the season to see but right now we're so in the thick of things we don't know whether it's the reason or it's not or the blessing or it's a, you know we really don't know. We're just kind of holding on and going forward. I know that the young players are getting better. I know that the leadership is changing with our older young ladies. I don't know the reason behind it yet, and I'm just not that smart to pick it up yet. So um, I do like what we're doing. I like what my, how my coaches are being so actively involved with each player, and uh, uh, they're holding me accountable too. Take me, uh, take me through a little bit of the West Coast part of this road trip. You get out to play uh, Oregon, one of the top teams in the country. You battled really hard, and then you go to Las Vegas, and you spend about a week there, and you win two games. What were, the, what were those two trips, parts of the trip like? Well, you know what? We really learned about how to trust defensively against Oregon. They were so good. They're so special. I think if they're not in the Final Four, they're an Elite Eight team. I, I think they got all the the, the, the – positions to feel to be great but we battled with them we really you know that first quarter and that uh third quarter i think we we actually won um but we learned how to trust and so we went to george played against georgetown in vegas um the trust was there and although georgetown you know athletically they're a really gifted team and they really do some really good things we just really didn't care about the opponent we just cared about who we were and then South Dakota State brought, presented, uh, you know, someone at the free throw line against our zone, and they pulled that kid out to the top of the key, and it challenged our defense a little bit. And they adjusted, and we made some different um, decisions defensively, and they bought into it. And that um, the defense created our offense against them as well. And then uh, you came back home, had a couple of days here at home, then you make the trip to Central Connecticut State, where the big headliner of that 82-69 was – a win was Brittany Morrison with 11 points and 16 rebounds. She's getting better, you know. Here's a kid that waited her turn, waited her turn. She she helped us her first freshman year, and then she had to she got back on the bench, and she never wavered. She stayed true to what she can do to help, and you know, with Summer out and, and Courtney out, she had to. She's the only one. What do you do? You stay locked on ready. And she's been locked on ready for four years, and now she's getting an opportunity, and she's really making the best of it. And then earlier this week, you at least get the benefit of a six-mile road trip, which is playing at Canisius, where your team played very well in an 84-66 win. Hannah Hall was the headliner there uh, with a career-high 16 points. She was all over the court in that first half, and someone has described her as just ultimately gritty in everything that she does. you agree with that? I, I think she's a special young lady. I, 
we didn't have the best shoot around, nor did we have the best practice leading up to this game. And the one constant we had that was positive and ready to go and playing hard was Hannah. And she was so locked into that game. If it was going to be Hannah was the one that's going to make it happen. We've gotten this far into the interview without mentioning Sierra Dillard yet. Oh, by the way, the nation's number two scorer. But because she's so good and she's got such a high standard, her 27, 25 points just are kind of expected every game, aren't they? It's it's, it's within the offense. It's what we do. And uh, she's just a special, special talent. You know, what she did this game, she probably could have had 35 to 40 points. What I love is that she wanted the team to really understand how to catch her spin passes, how to catch her no-look passes. And that was a game to demonstrate how we can do it in a slower level, that they can learn how to catch it. I, I coached a lot of players, and I coached Olympians. I, you know, I coached USA Basketball for two years. This kid is right there with the best of them, talent-wise. But her person and her personality is what you have to see if you're near Buffalo. Overall, you like where your team is developing, where they're at right now with a lot more to go before the max schedule starts. Are you happy right now? Never, never uh, satisfied. Always happy because I know they're giving me their best effort. We're still not doing the, the little things defensively, and we're still not pushing with poise. And so those are things that we're just going to continue to get better as we get more players healthy. But as we continue to get our kids healthy and ready back on the court, we're going to get even better. But right now, there's a lot more road for us to do to get better. Good to have you back in town. It's good to be home. This is UB Basketball Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Welcome back. The men's and women's basketball teams are off to a great start on the season, but it's not the only good thing that's going on around here with UB Athletics. The football team finished up their season with 10 wins, a school record for a single season. And that means they've been selected to play in the Dollar General Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. The Bulls will face Sunbelt opponent Troy on December 22nd at 7 o'clock on ESPN. It'll be the first ever meeting between the two programs. Tickets to the Dollar General Bowl are on sale now at the UB ticket office. To order by phone, call 1-877-UB-THERE or go to ubbowls.com. Etch your name into UB history by securing a personalized brick on the new Stampede Plaza located near the brand new Murchie Family Field house available in three customizable sizes these bricks are the perfect way to celebrate the holidays the deadline to order your brick comes up on december 31st 2018 to order call 1-833-551-5702 or go to bricksforbulls.com Big one for the men's team today at St. Bonaventure. It's a 4 p.m. tip-off that you can see on ESPN Plus or you can hear on ESPN 1520. Then later in the month, the women have a huge game here at Alumni Arena against Stanford on December 21st. And then the next day, it's the Dollar General Bowl from Mobile, Alabama as the football team takes on Troy. So much good stuff going on here. We're off for a couple of weeks, but we'll be back to get you caught up on all of the good stuff happening here at UB. Thanks for watching this week's edition of the UB Basketball Insider Show.